We've been talking about the deadly toxins that are in your water. Now I'm going to reveal the top three ways you can protect yourself and your family. Now here, I want to make this clear. I still want everyone to go ahead and drink water every single day. So I'm going to tell you how to keep your water safe. So step number one is you have to go get your municipal water report. Your municipal report is easily found. You can get it, by the way, through uh, calling, you know, calling up city council. It's on their website. It's called the Consumer Confidence Report sometimes, or CCR. By law, it has to be available in your town. If it doesn't come in your mail, go seek it out. So I've got ours for New York City here, because that's where we taped the show. And so I'm going to show you on this big screen what it looks like when you get it so you can understand what you're getting. It's not difficult. You're looking for a few simple items. The first thing you're going to look for, again, this is what it would typically look like on the front page, is make sure you know how much lead is in the water that you're drinking. Now, it's going to tell you, by the way, what the average number should be, what the limitations of it are. It's also going to tell you over here what the sources of the water are. So it's pretty simple. In this case, it will say corrosive household plumbing systems. Now, why is this important? Because if you're getting stuff sent to your home and it's coming through a lot of tubes, even if it left the reservoir wherever it came from clean, it may have still picked up some junk. So this is an easy way for you to figure out one of the major concerns I have uh, with the municipal report. Number two thing you're going to look for are the nitrates and nitrites. These actually come from runoff from fertilizer use, uh, sewage has it, erosion causes it sometimes. Again, it'll give you the product, how much is tolerable, and exactly what the source is. And again, you have to look at the range to make sure that it's within the normal range. A little bit is well tolerated by the human body. You just can't get too much. The third thing you want to look for is E. coli. And E. coli is what feces has in it. It's bacteria in, in the sewage. And you get it from both human and animal sources. You don't want to have any of that, ideally, right? There's no tolerable limit. But it's pretty clear. It's on the report. They're publishing it. They're giving it to you. It's yours by law to have, right? And the last thing you're going to check for are things that they normally screen for that there shouldn't be any of in your water. Things like arsenic, cyanide, and mercury. In this case, thankfully, we don't have any. We actually have pretty good drinking water in New York City. Now, does that all make sense? Okay. Now, I just showed with you how to figure out if the water supplier to you is delivering high-quality water. But you need to go one step past that because, unfortunately, once the water hits your pipes, it can still pick up contamination. And if you don't happen to have your water from a municipal source, then you're having it from a well or something that's near your home that's not necessarily audited, you need to be able to figure out if your water is good. So they are all-in-one, simple, easy testing systems. They're inexpensive. What you do is take out the vials. In this case, I actually tested to see if there are bacteria in the water. This, it's got a little powder in it. You add the water. You wait 48 hours. You don't have to send it anywhere. You just Fill it up the vial, put it on the counter, let it go for 48 hours. When you come back, if it's that color purple, that's good. That you don't have bacteria. If it comes back yellowish, you have bacteria in your water. By the way, you check for all the chemicals that, that I just discussed as well. Easy, simple to do. No excuse for not doing it, moms. Because if you want the kids to drink the water, you're going to have to address that. Now, that's how you screen to see if it's good enough. But I want you guys to be perfect. I want you to live as, you know, as vital as you can. So I'm going to go through the systems that I think make sense to consider helping you get the cleanest water possible for your family. The first and easiest and simplest and cheapest is to use a carafe system, which is a pitcher that has a, a fiber, uh, a carbon rather, element to it. And carbon, by the way, absorbs a lot of these chemicals, which is why it's the foundation of all the filters I'm going to show you. If you've got a family like I do, that's not enough because I'm not going to be pouring water in her all day long to make sure the kids have clean water. So you can consider putting a filter on top of the sink. I like these screw-on uh, products because uh, they're relatively inexpensive. They cost maybe 50 bucks. You don't need a plumber, which saves you a lot of money as well. They'll filter out a lot of the water that comes through the faucet so it's clean enough for you to use. But I actually think an even smarter approach is what I do at my house, which is to go underneath the, the, the faucet uh, where the plumbing is, and you can actually split the pipes. You can put the dishwashing water through here because it's not so critical. And you can take water that you're going to drink through a separate carbon filter. It comes through here at a pretty high velocity. And we drink water out, out of this faucet rather than the main faucet. Now, that's the best approach, I think, for the drinking water. But what people don't recognize, and this is perhaps the most important thing I'm going to say today because a lot of you know there's a problem here. You don't recognize you've got a problem here, which is the water we bathe in and shower in. Now, I'll tell moms right now, and I don't want to hedge on this, I don't think that you should be bathing your kids in the tub unless you know that water's clean. Because what ends up happening is the water's got chlorine in it, chloroform, other chemicals and byproducts get into the water. It's warm. 
that opens up the pores of the child. Child bathes in the water. All those chemicals get absorbed through the skin because the skin is very absorptive, and your child, therefore, is being contaminated. So I would suggest that you either clean the water, as we're talking about, and if you're not sure you can't clean it, you should choose shower systems. The shower system also works pretty simply. You can just screw on uh, filters here or at the, at the base of the system. And when you shower with water that's been uh, cleansed through a carbon filter, it doesn't have a lot of the drying effects that so many of the waters uh, in our community have. One other point I want, I want to mention, if you can't afford to get a carbon filter for your shower, then do the following. Don't put the mister on high. Because by doing that, you avoid the mist that can be inhaled by you, but also penetrates your skin more. Also, don't shower at very hot temperatures. That also opens up your skin so more of the chemicals can get into you. All right. Now, big approach is to put the whole house on a filter. And that's what this is. So water comes in through here, through one filter, then another filter, then a final filter, and then it leaves the house. Big system, costs a fair amount of money. The one catch for this filter and all the rest that I've talked about is they all have a time period where they're effective. And if you don't check to see how long they last, whether it's three months, six months, a year, or they often have sensors that will tell you when they don't work, then you end up with this. This actually came out of that type of a device. So if the filter is dirty and it's full of mud and junk and, and crud that you don't want to have in your filter, it's not going to be effective at removing this material. So until we figure out what we're going to do as a nation to clean our water supply, then we've got to do it ourselves. And for the moms out there, this is your battle. All right, now, I want to thank Consumers Union for their help and the research they did to help us get this message across to you. There's a lot more to learn. Check out DrOz.com for more about safe water and spread the word.